Johnny Bobby's Jamboree I'll be cooking with Steve and Shannon of Shannon Rose and the Thorns. Nice. <laughs> and we'll be making a Martha Stewart adaptation of mac and cheese with spring vegetables. Holler! <laughs> And then, <laughs> and then she was like, what? oh, hey, welcome into the kitchen, guys. So, Shannon, you are an extraordinary singer-songwriter working on a new album, but you've also released an album called Seasons. It's an album that was comprised of four five-song EPs that were each written, recorded, and released in their respective Canadian season. Wow. Well, do you have a favorite season? Nope. Um, I like them all equally. Uh, I kind of had a feeling you would say that. <laughs> so would you say uh, thematically they change more than musically? Summer is a little more fun. It's a little more rock, maybe because we're all feeling a little more loose. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel right now in the springtime? <laughs> Spring is like, it's very fresh. And which season did you start with? We started with winter. Sad times. <laughs> I like winter. <laughs> oh yeah. You like them all. <laughs> It's loud. See, eating locally is a big part of the jamboree. What month do you anticipate? Well, summer is the best because you get all the berries, probably. Those are my mm -hmm. favorite. It's always fun when the peaches start showing up. You guys are married. He's, he's more of a creative cook. I have like one thing I make, like mac and cheese. Okay, so uh, tell me what you usually put in your mac and cheese. Macaroni. Okay. And cheese. Okay, I think we have that. How do you say it? Bech bechamel? Mm hmm. I like to say sauce. sauce. I don't know. I think sauce sounds spicier. Hmm. Sauce sounds, you know, just it's nice and creamy. Sauce is like, ah, oh, I'm gonna feel that. So, you do you use your hands to like whisk? <laughs> Definitely. Stay tuned, guys, because now we're gonna start using our hands. Sauce. Mac and cheese. Now, how did you come across this recipe? I had a roommate who actually used to make really delicious mac and cheese. And, uh, this was the closest recipe I found to what I imagined she was doing. With any recipe, you can make your own adaptations. So, since it's spring, uh, asparagus is in season. Ah! What you can use instead of asparagus that's also available this time of year? Fiddleheads. Oh, but, sorry. Um, Grab that again. A secret. You know what else you can use this time of year? What? Fiddleheads are basically the bud of a fern and you can harvest them in the wild if you want. I would recommend getting the Peterson Field Guide which uh, tells you if you're eating poison or not. <laughs> or they're also readily available at farmers markets or any reputable grocer with a lot of local produce. And you basically cook them as you would asparagus. Another thing that's available at this time of year are wild garlic ramps. You really have to be sure that they're not harvesting it illegally. So just harass them, just say, yo, yo, wait, where you get this from? <laughs> Duh, why are you asking? <laughs> then you know not to buy it from them. Don't stop. Should we call the cops? I don't know if the cops will uh, is that a thing that Rogers won't hear? Say the opposite of what you just said. <laughs> yes, call the police. <laughs> and I'll form like party to your form. Get ready. Our pan is getting warm and the milk is steaming. Can you please put in three tablespoons of butter dans le skillet? I can do that. You want more than that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How's that? Okay. Good. Look at this beautiful cooperation. Six years of marriage, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Seven year itch coming right up. <laughs> We're basically making a roux here. So it's melted butter and flour. When you're heating milk up on the side, it's good to be mindful that it's not scorching on the bottom. So you gotta cook this for one minute, just like so. And just make sure that that also doesn't burn. Now I hear, Steve, that you're gluten intolerant. Yes. Please tell me more about that. Please tell me more about your digestive issues. <laughs> um, well, Shannon decided that I should try it. I found that when I cut it out of my diet, I just feel better. Mm -hmm. It's uh, less lethargic, more energy, and I find I, because I'm paying attention to the food that I'm picking, I'm picking better food. And you generally feel better. Yep. That's great, because I put arrowroot flour, which is gluten-free. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so I'm gonna slowly pour this I'm in. Can you whisking. whisk? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> So we're pouring two and a half cups of milk into our three tablespoons of butter and quarter cup of arrowroot flour. So tell me more about your lives. We're gonna start putting the cheese in. We have two and a quarter cups of cheddar. Sprinkle it in there. Cooperation. Do we have some for on top too? I save a little bit of this. That's a good idea. Cooking with a pro here, cooking with a pro. This is a good recipe for cheese fondue. So if you have a little fondue pot, you're making the cheese fondue sauce. So I'm using green onions instead of the wild garlic because that's what I have available right now. And just chop it up. And Steve, could you put in the quarter cup of Parmesan cheese? I can. Cheese curds. It'll also be a fun little experiment. It is. Good, yeah. excited. But you know what'll make it smell even better? Nutmeg. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all know, but this is what nutmeg looks like. And it just tastes and smells a million times better when you freshly grate it. Did you catch that? <laughs> he said it sounds great. <laughs> sounds great? Great grating. Oh! <laughs> the nutmeg is... Just until you smell it. Just... There. Okay, I'm gonna put some freshly ground pepper in. And if you don't have a whole fresh nutmeg, you can just use the powdered stuff. I would do an eighth of a teaspoon. Same for the freshly cracked black pepper. And now your favorite, standby garlic powder. I would do maybe half a teaspoon. Oh. I really like a little bit of heat, so I'm gonna put a tiny bit of this hot Hungarian paprika. That's what makes it sauce. And a, and a tiny bit of salt. Now you don't want, and a tiny, cheese is salty. Now for the beautiful spring indulgence. If you just snap it, wherever it snaps, it just breaks off the woody part for you. That's oh. a good tip. Would that you like to uh, have some fun there? Yeah. I think we're almost ready to bake it. No. <laughs> well then what do, we, what do we do next? Well, we have to put all this stuff together. We're just excited because it's gonna be I know, so good. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Bam. Too. Gonna chop up this asparagus, cut a vegetable the same size as the other vegetables, or in this case, the macaroni. So, you know, macaroni sized asparagus. When Absolutely. you're cooking, it's you really nice to have a nibble while you're cooking. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. You're right, a little bit more garlic. I would put in a little bit more of any, everything. I find that most recipes are underspiced anyway. So we've pre-cooked our pound of macaroni here, but not quite till al dente. You want it to be kind of undercooked because you're baking it after. So you're gonna put in your drained, rinsed macaroni into the sauce, and then you're gonna stir it up. I'm also gonna throw in my asparagus in there too. I'm putting it in raw because it's also going to bake. We've preheated the oven to 375, and you're gonna want to butter your casserole dish, like so. Have you tried quinoa pasta? I have, yeah. It's really good. It tastes the most like regular pasta. It's got more protein in it. Okay, well, you just kind of dump it in there. Even it out. So, um, my old roommate, when she would make it, instead of breadcrumbs, um, she would put soda crackers, and they're crunchy and salty. We can all do some because it's a lot That's of a fun. That's a fun time. To Did you guys ever like put like do that thing where you tried to put as many soda crackers in your mouth as possible? And you're like breathing out. Soda yeah. <laughs> yeah, choking on it. <laughs> if you were doing gluten free, maybe you could try rice crackers. <laughs> it would be good. I made a little pot of extra gluten free pasta for us later. Sweet. Okay, so I like to just kind of squish it into the the pasta. I know it doesn't seem really lovely, but I think it's the best idea ever because it soaks up the yeah, flavors. Yeah, it sticks in. It gets a little bit softer. And then you just top it with cheese. So uh, who do you serve this for? Everyone. Because it's the only thing I know how to make. Do you uh, serve anything else with it? Wine. 
Why? Yeah, that's generally it. What kind? A lovely Bordeaux or maybe a white? A nice white. Merlot is good. I saved some asparagus spear for a little bit of garnish on top. For y'all vegans out there, I'm going to also put on some nutritional yeast. Now, nutritional yeast is available at most health food stores and has a bit of cheesy flavor. It's also full of B vitamins, so I'm gonna throw some of that on. Try a recipe online that I've provided for you in the link below on our YouTube site, youtube.com slash E-V-A-Y-U-M-M-E-R-S. Please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna grab some ground back pepper on top too for a little bite. I'm gonna put this in the oven for half an hour. Thank you so much for being on the show. You're great. Thank you for having me on the show. You are also great. Cheers! <laughs> Cheers! Let's dig in! I might try yours. Okay. Mm. Mm. I like the dill. I think Martha would be proud. I think she'd be jealous. Oh! oh Hova. <laughs> From everyone at the show, thanks for watching Eva B's Jamboree. And you know what? You should subscribe for more seasonal recipes, delights, and laughs. <laughs>